Law and Cybernetics Law and the legal profession are frequently accused of Ptolemaism. Ptolemy's geocentric universe went undisputed and isolated for 14 centuries. To this day, universities have special libraries dedicated to law and lawyers have their own language. Many years ago, a Fulbright scholarship gave me the unique opportunity to find out why. I asked myself the question, what is the connection between law and cybernetics? Personal computers and law offices and precedent searches using internet are only a minute part of the answer. I found that the law and cybernetics connection goes very deep into the essence of law as information as a multi-layered instruction set to be carried out by humans. The connection has to do with the meaning of the word cybernetics from the Greek word kubernetes, which means the pilot of a ship. It is also the origin for the word governor and governance. Cybernetics was created in 1948 through an interdisciplinary effort. Cybernetics was so successful that all its parent sciences adopted something from it. Few people care to look back. To the left are the parent sciences. To the right, a list of current areas of interest. It is not very long ago that law showed its connection to management cybernetics, which is built on all these theories and therefore appeared much later. Stafford Beer, its founder, calls it the science of effective organization. Let's start showing the connections. Laws regulate human behavior, and cybernetics was born as controlling communications in the animal and the machine in 1948. The obvious link is the word control and the control of human behaviors in society. Communications are the means to achieve control, whether of people, organizations, animals, or machines. Psychology is also an obvious connection between law and cybernetics once psychology started using the black box approach and inputs and outputs. Shown here are the Milgram experiments, proving a cultural bias towards blindly obeying authority figures. Many law students enter law school knowing that they won't have anything to do with mathematics. Somehow, their intuition tells them that the universe is definitely not the billiard ball universe that Newton described. In fact, within its deepest innermost essence and structure, laws are information, and law is in good measure, applied cybernetics. For instance, the system of checks and balances in the U.S. Constitution was designed by the Founding Fathers, most of whom were lawyers. Other sciences could not connect to law because lawyers were discovering and applying cybernetic control principles intuitively. If scientists were jealous, maybe it's because lawyers run countries. Thanks in part to the widespread use of personal computers, People can understand that laws are not much different from software. The self-organizing system in charge of making and applying and changing the law as much as needed is called the state. Cybernetics enable biology to evolve towards molecular biology and explore the role of DNA and RNA as information sequences. The evolution of law is more akin to a biological evolution than man-made design, the complex builds on top of the simple. Law's characteristic challenge has been doing justice. Here are some ancient definitions of justice. What important cybernetic concept is underlying these definitions? It is that of requisite variety. Law aspires to show requisite variety. Justice is the perfect application of Ashri's law. Ashby's Law says only variety can absorb variety. This is the most important law of control and just as important as the law of gravity. Ashby's Law says that the variety of a regulator must match the variety generated by the system you want to regulate. However, given the principle of liberty and the fact that life situations can be infinite, laws will inevitably lag behind reality. This is why the Supreme Court decisions will always have a surprise element to them, beginning with Marbury v. Madison, where the court established judicial review of the actions of the other branches of government. 
The court tries to provide the variety that the law or the legislator did not foresee and the new situation demands. It's called interpretation, but it is not because new information is created that wasn't there. Here is a diagram of Ashby's laws of requisite variety. As you can see, governments or managements solve problems using two steps. First, they create a system, and then the system solves the problem. In each case, Ashby's laws of requisite variety is met by amplifying its own control variety and filtering incoming variety, as shown in this diagram. Both symbols were electrical engineering's contributions to cybernetics. With Ashby's diagram in hand and adding other cybernetic features, Stafford Beer created the viable system model. Stafford Beer studied the structure of the human brain and nervous system and realized that it is the most perfect control mechanism in the universe. Not only that, he discovered that every organism capable of an independent existence from a single cell to a gigantic corporation have the same cybernetic structure. Not until Beer discovered the cybernetic principles that make every organization viable has cybernetics been in a position to explain how the legal system works. Viable systems are a collection of other viable systems and necessarily are contained in another larger viable system. We can go from cells to planet Earth and perhaps further in both directions. Here is a picture of a cell. And here is another cell. Both are viable systems and can be mapped using Beer's model. What about everything in between these two viable systems? How about the legal system called the state? In Querétaro, Mexico, 1983, I asked Stafford if his model of viable systems would include the state. He assured me it should. I tested Beer's model and found that the match between the viable system model and a mapping of the Constitution is absolutely remarkable. Here is the cybernetic model on the left, and here is the constitution in diagrammatic form on the right. Here is a brief example of the two-step process. The constitution creates Congress, and Congress creates laws. The do's and don'ts for Congress, and the do's and don'ts for the people. Law has applied syllogistic logic for ages, but the legislative process is a prime example of the need for circular logic and feedback to attempt to solve problems by successive approximations. The cybernetic connection also shows that law, politics, and economics are just three different aspects of one organization, the state. Economics has to do with the exchanges of goods and services. Law has to do with studying the rules that provide cohesion to the state. Politics has to do with participation in the collective decision-making processes. Laws cannot provide certainty in every legal case imaginable. The legal system works more as a homeostat which is constantly adjusting than a clockwork with predefined solutions. Values are in conflict. For instance, equality versus loyalty, justice versus efficiency, individual rights versus group welfare, and so on. Cybernetics embraces paradox, and so does the law. Law has been responsible for ensuring the viability of human communities during centuries of evolution. Cybernetic laws are behind free markets, democracy, and the rule of law. Management cybernetics has a more explicit language than law to explain learning and adaptation in organizations.